Can you draw a panda? This week, learn how to use reference photos to draw a panda. Up to now, you've been drawing shapes and solids out of your head. That's great up to a point, but as you add details and look how light interacts on surfaces, it can become a bit more complex than your head can handle. There's two ways to handle this. One is to draw from life. Set up a scene or find one and draw away. However, that's not the most portable. In Procreate and other drawing apps, reference photos are mobile, simple ways to look at a scene. For something different, let's draw a panda from a photo. Now, first of all, we're going to need a photo of a panda. There's two ways to use reference photos, as a layer in Procreate or using split views. With split views, you can go to websites without having to save anything. I often use websites like Pinterest to get photos, like I have here. I also visit free photography sites like Pixabay and Pexels. I'm using Pexels.com for this exercise, so I'm going to go search for a panda here. And so I'll just go in the search engine here and type panda. And hit search. And I'm going to use this guy right here, this first one. And so there is our panda. You'll see those three dots anytime you're using iPad OS 15 or later. And what you can do is just tap those and you'll get a little screen that comes up that gives you three choices. You're going to want the one in the middle here. It slides everything to the side and lets you pick another app. And I'm going to pick Procreate here. So I'm going to zoom in on my bear here to make sure we can see him better. And take a look at some things. First of all, I want you to notice that there's a circle for his head. He's got a pretty round circle. That circle has a big trapezoid on the outside of it. And there are extra shapes along here, which are the arms and legs, so that we can use those in dark. So I can make some big rectangles or sausages or circles to make those. And then the muzzle is a form of a box. And we can use that box Put on the bottom side of it the triangle which is his nose and then once we do all that we can put some of the other details in there like his eye patches and his ears the ears are just a form of a circle with a little bit of flattening to them so we can put all that together and we can start to say okay so here are my shapes for what i'm going to do now i'm going to go ahead and use that bar and move it over so that my panda is over here i can now go into procreate and I'm going to get my screen size as usual. I'll go to my brush, 100% brush size and about 60 something opacity. And I'll just go ahead and put some dark on that. And I'll get out the blend tool and blend that out so I have a, a dark surface like this. So now I've got my dark surface and I'm ready to start on my panda. And I'm going to use the eraser. I'm going to use a relatively small size to start. And I'm going to bring down my opacity a bit. So I'm just making some light lines to start this. What I'm going to do is just make the circle that's that head to start with. And then we know we've got this trapezoid shape here. Okay, and so that's going to be the basis of my panda. I can even make my life a little easier and I'm going to just block that in to start like that. Now I'm going to go to my brush and I'm going to start looking at some of these other things. So I've got over here where I've got that arm and I'm going to bring down my brush size a bit. I'm going to bring it up to a high opacity this time and I'm going to start to block out with some shapes that arm. Now you'll notice here that I've got some guides because that arm is all the way at the end of that trapezoid. So that gives me some reference points for that. And I'm going to put in, he's got a little bit of a paw in there. So I'm going to put the paw in there. And then I can do the same thing on the other side is I've got part of the arm goes here, part of the arm goes up like this somehow. And then he's got a paw up like this. And if I want to go in deeper now, I block in that shape.
And you'll notice here it's also going a little bit more like here. So I can leave a little bit of that there so I can tell the difference. But all of that is a blocked in shape for my arms. And I got one more down here. So if you take a look over here, we've got a little bit of a foot. So I'm going to just do something around like that for a foot and leave that like that. And everything else is sort of obscured by this brush. So I'm going to just leave that alone for now. And we'll deal with that later. Now let's go up to the top here. And we'll start working on the eyes. I'm going to bring down my opacity. All right, so now what I'm going to do is bring up my line size a little bit, bring my opacity to somewhere about 50%. And I'm going to put a line in here, OK? And you'll notice this line is about halfway between the bottom of the head and the top of the head. And if you look at the panda, I actually should be tilting this a little bit. He's got a line like this that is the line of his eyes, OK? What we call the eye line. And that anchors everything else that's going on here. And I'm going to make this even smaller now. And I can blend that out in a minute. But I'm going to just start making some darker lines that will make essentially the box we had before. And my paw is a little too high here, so I'm going to erase some of it. And one of the things you'll find with reference photos is as you're working, you'll find that some of the things don't work. And so you do need to start changing things around like I'm doing here. I'm going to go back to my brush now, and I am actually have a bit of a box made shape here. Like this, okay? And on the sides of that will be, and I'm going to go up on my size a little bit, will be two circles for the eyes. And I can zoom in here, bring that down a little bit. And we got the triangle for the nose. That extends down into a bit of a smile, which is the end of that. And I can then bring up the paw to that point. And I can start erasing some of this, because this is not really there. And this is actually much lighter. And you can see we're starting to see a panda come out of this. We can sort of figure out where these ears are going to go, which is over here. And I'll make a little circle over here. And it's a little flatter on this side than that. And I can bring that up and add in the ears. Okay, and now I can start to take what I have here of my panda and just start blending stuff up and add more color. I'll go back to my eraser here and start erasing more here, and I'm going to bring up the opacity because all of this is much more white. Okay, and I can bring down the size a little bit, and that goes down his nose like that. Erasure mark in here. His paws, you can see here on the paw. There's a little bit of light in here, so I'm going to go back with the eraser a little bit. I don't need that much. And I can go back a little bit here with the eraser. And if you look over here on this side, he's got a little bit of light over here. So I'm going to, it's pretty much already there on my sketch. There's a little bit of light there. Okay. And then I can put some brush in here, which will take care of what's going to be in this area here. So I can start to put this together. The arm here is a little bit not round enough, and we want to make sure that he's got lots of round on him. So I'm going to bring this up. Go to my brush, bring this up. Okay, and then it's just a matter of blending this up. So I can just go to the blend if I have it at the right size. And 
can blend up my panda. Just a little more white over here, so I'm going to stick some white. Blend the stuff up here. And you can see there's pretty much that's a straight blend in there. It's hard to see the difference between the parts of his arms. You may just take a very thin bit of white like that and blend that just a little bit. And you sort of get the idea here. And this over here is either a piece of wood. I can't actually tell what that is. Probably it's a piece of wood, so it's a log or something. So you could actually just sort of blend out like this and maybe bring up the blend a bit maybe not that much and blend that out a bit as though it's a log and you can add a little more color to that And let's put a little more color in there just to get that log shape in there. A little smaller blend there. Okay, so he's got something over on this side of him. And I'm going to, again, blend in here. And we want to try to keep the panda is a round shape. He's very, very round and roly-poly. So we can try to keep to the round shapes here. And it, we can do it nice and soft and fuzzy, so... These edges can be kind of fuzzy too. All right, and so there you got it. And then you just go back in here. I can just do a little scribble like this. Throw a few more scribbles like that in here. As though we've got some reeds or something like that, which you can blend in a little bit. And you got yourself a nice looking panda here. Notice some areas are slightly lighter or darker. You may want to go back a little bit. Um, for example, over here, I may add just a little bit more darkness and scrub that in so that his chin here, as you can see in the photo, his chin is a little darker than everything else. And he's a little darker over here. But he's pretty light on the top here. So you can play with the amount of light that's there. Okay. And you can, of course, refine this a lot more. If your panda doesn't look good enough, that's okay. It's probably the first animal you've drawn from a photo. I could spend hours fixing this one up to make it look a lot better than it already does. In this lesson, I demonstrate how to get views set up for the reference photo identify shapes involved in construction, and identify lengths and relationships by measuring. Your challenge this week is draw this panda. If you are adventurous, try a few other pandas. Since they're black and white, they work well for the charcoal we're using. I also have more on the Pinterest board, which you'll find a link to in the description below. Until next time, keep creating.